From Hollywood comes romance. My love for Scotland was fierce and hot and terrible. And my love for the fair Faith Canyon was warm and tender. I never knew how close these two loves were bound together or how much heartbreak I'd have to bear until I, I nearly lost them both. And now with our stars, Ben Wright and Francis Robinson, we bring you transcribed the stirring tale of William Wallace, the man who freed Scotland from the yoke of the English, the man who fought the tyranny of a conqueror, William Wallace, the man from the north. It is the year 1259. The English have swept across the border into Scotland... And now, in every Scottish town and village, there are English soldiers, English officers, English voices. The Scots have been conquered in the field. But under the surface, feeling runs high. Loyal Scots are waiting only for a man to lead them, a man to help them throw off this yoke of English oppression. And now, dusk has fallen over the countryside, and the moors are cold and fog-swept as two men ride into a small village. Let's stop at that tavern there and see about something to eat. Fine. Maybe it won't be overrun with these English swine. Hey, it goes against our blood, doesn't it? Foreign soldiers in our streets, in our homes, in our churches, stealing, plundering, carrying off our women, killing. Careful, William. Those men would have soon cut out your tongue as look at you. Hey, they'd have to kill me first. I cannot understand the people. Where is that pride in freedom and freedom we've always had in Scotland? Why don't we fight and drive these intruders out? We will one day, when we have a leader. Out of my way, Scotland. You're blocking my path. I'll not step aside for you, you filthy drunken pig. Maybe you don't know who I am. I'm an officer in the English army. I'm entitled to respect, sir. Now get out of my way and be thankful I don't run my sword through you. Perhaps you don't know who I am, sir. My name is Wallace. Wallace. William Wallace. I'm a Scot by heredity, by birth and by devotion. And I'll step aside only for another Scot. A Scotchman? There are no more Scotchmen. This is a conquered country. Well, you're going to move out of my way, or should I kill you and walk over you? Ah, you'll have to kill me. Or walk around me. All right, Scotchman. <laughs> I'll teach you a lesson and send you to the grave with it. Aye, you'll be careful that you don't take it to the grave <laughs> yourself. Be careful with you. Ah, there's blood on your cheeks, Scotchman. Aye, and there's blood on your sleeve. Have you ever tasted Scottish steel before, officer? Or, or have you always remained safe behind your troops? By all that's holy, I'll kill you before this night's done. Will you? No. No. Uh, uh, you've run him through. Come on, William. We've got to get away from here. Come on. Here. Here. What's happened, sir? Right after that man. The tall man. The woman on his cheek. Don't let him get away. His name is Wallace. William Wallace. Catch him. Kill him. Uh, He's dead. Well, don't stand there. After him. After the outlaw! There's a cottage just ahead. I can see the lights. It's just a few yards now. You can make it, can't you? I, I hope so. You've lost a lot of blood. You'll have to rest somewhere. Perhaps these will be friendly people. Yeah, that's an ugly cut on your face. I'm afraid it'll leave a scar. John. John, is it close? Is, is it much further? It's right at hand now. Here, hold on to me. I'll help you down. Oh. There. Who 
Who are you? This man is wounded. He needs rest and care. You can see that he's unconscious. Sister! Sister! Come quickly. Will you care for him and will you hide him in case they ride this way asking for him? Quickly, quickly bring him in. We've ridden all night. You didn't have to tell us. We know. You've ridden all night from the north. Bring him in. Bring him in quickly. I've accepted your hospitality too many days. I'm well again, and I can impose on you no longer. Tonight, I'll ride by the hills. You've been very good to me. We've stepped into history by helping you, Mr. Wallace. Why, why do you say that? Because you were born to free Scotland. And you will free her. I will free Scotland? <laughs> Two elderly sisters in a lonely cottage on the moor is at the... A strange place to hear a prophecy like that. Hush. Let her speak while she sees the vision. Tonight, you will ride for the hills. And we will go into every hamlet and village, sending men who love Scotland after you. And they will bring more men. And you yourself will gather men as you go. With those men, you will free Scotland. Aye. My sister and I speak with a voice of prophecy. And what I say will come to pass. You will free Scotland. This is a, a great task, and I'm not... Ah, you're a great man. The vision has passed. I, it, how, how far is the kirk from here? I, I think I should like to go there for a moment before I'll leave this part of the country. Go then, William Wallace, and dinna think lightly on what has been said here. Go now. Bruce! Bruce, I must talk with... Oh, you're not Bruce. No, my lady. I was to meet him here at the kirk, but I'm late. I'm afraid you are. They've closed the kirk for the night. Your voice. You're not from this part of the country. No. And that scar on your cheek. I'm afraid I'm... And that great lock of raven hair. You're William Wallace. How do you know so much about Wallace? I know that Wallace is here in these parts. I've heard men talk of him and describe him. And if I wear Wallace? What then? I know you are he. And I must talk with you. I haven't much time. I hardly think... Please. So. Very well. It's after dusk. We're not likely to be overheard or seen. How is it you placed me so quickly, my lady? Captain Selby and his officers were frequent visitors in my father's house. After Selby's death a month ago in Dundee, his junior officers related the whole story to my father. It was Wallace that killed him. You're a clever girl. But I think we should part now. We have nothing further to talk about. What do you mean? If the captain was a frequent visitor in your house, then you and I are enemies. My father is a Scottish baron, one of the 400 rulers of Scotland. Then you're even more of an enemy. For well, the Scottish barons have betrayed Scotland by siding with the English. My father is your enemy, not I. I think he would kill me if he knew where I was and with whom just now. Hey. Why are you here? Why am I here? I think you can answer that better than I. What does Scotland mean to you, William Wallace? Scotland? Scotland is my blood and my bone and my sinew. Scotland is my fire and my tears and my anguish. That's something that burns and bleeds inside me when I see strange soldiers in our streets, when I see Scotsmen submit to infamy. Scotland today is my anger and my torment and my conscience. And somehow, my destiny... I must fight for her, and I will die for her if necessary. I cannot put things like that. Those are a man's words and a man's fire. But inside, that's the way I feel, too. I think my father and the other barons have betrayed Scotland. And I want to help in any way that you'll let me. Do you believe me? Yes. Yes, I do believe you. What can I do? You can talk to the men in your father's service. 
Find what ones are trustworthy and send them to a place that I'll tell you about. I'll do it. You can depend on me. My dear, I know I can. Tonight, 50 of us ride to join one of the Highlands. Who else will come with us? I go with you, man. I Then go home and send your families goodbye. And meet here within the hour. Aye, man, I'm way to the death. I want Wallace. The King of England wants him. That general, wanting him is one thing and getting him is another. There's a bag of gold here, Major, for anyone who will help us get him. There must be someone who is approachable. Oh, no, he's become a symbol to these people. I don't think one of them would betray him. He's a man, not a god. There's some way to get him, and I'll find that way. Tonight we'll ride to the north of Fort. There are three fortresses there that we'll fire. Robertson? Aye. You'll lead your men in the attack on the first one. It is located just about five leagues from the town. Right. Johnny Graham? Aye. You'll attack the second with your men, which is about ten leagues to the west. The rest will ride with me on the third. Come. There's freedom in the wind tonight. Let's ride with it. Right. Aye. Aye. I think I've solved our problem, General Ormsby, how to capture our friend Sir William Wallace. Oh, yes? You noticed, Major, that no one took my offer of money. I noticed, but this is a little more subtle. This, I think, will work. I've discovered that Wallace has been riding down from the Highlands to see a girl. I don't know when and how he comes, but I know he comes. Indeed. He's too clever to be caught in any trap. Ah, uh, I have in mind a very special trap, General. This one, I think, will work. William? William, are you there? Hey, darling. I was afraid you weren't coming. I had a little trouble getting away. Oh, isn't it beautiful up here? It seems so close to heaven, doesn't it? It is. Very close to him. You know, all day when I was trying to work on plans, I was writing your name all over the paper. And Johnny Graham came in and looked over my shoulder and said, uh, I take it our next objective is to capture Faith. I think that objective is already accomplished. Oh, my darling, I'm so much in love with you. That's all I want to talk about. Everything I say seems to begin, Faith thinks this or Faith says that. Uh, you're very beautiful. I've told you that before, haven't I? Yes, but I like to hear you say it. Oh, my darling, what's to become of us? What's to become of us? Well, one day when Scotland is free, I'll come to you and I'll say, I've brought you a house at Dundee, and if you'll come and be the heart of that house, I'll be happy forever. I'd like that house in Dundee. Aye, it'll be just outside the city. It'll have a garden in front and a meadow at the back, and it'll be the kind of a house that'll put its arms around you and keep you safe from me. And we'll have 17 cows and five pigs and the biggest fireplace you ever saw. I'd like to rock my dreams in front of that fireplace. And you will? Oh, William. William. Why, what is it? What's wrong, my darling? If this were another day or if we were two other people, it could be such a wonderful world. William, go back to the hills and don't come down again. I love you. Do you think that I can love you and stay away from you? I think you must. It isn't a safe you to come down. And it is no right when there's so much at stake. I... I know you're right. Faith, you'll think of me. Pray for me. Every hour. Every moment. And you'll wait. I'll wait until that day when you'll ride up to the castle with victory at your back and say... There's a house waiting at Dundee. And will you come with me? I'll go with you whether it's Dundee or the ends of the world. You'd better go now. We'd better say goodbye. It's growing late. All right. I'll go. Hey, shall I uh, ride back a wee bit with you? No, I'll be all right. There's no danger for me, you know. Only for you. Well, I'll... I'll see you soon, I hope. In Dundee. In Dundee. A 
Are you Sir Malcolm Kenyon? Um, do you have a daughter, Faith? What business is that of yours? What mean you waking my house at this hour of night with your questions? All right, men. This is the castle. Search every corner of it until you find the girl. What do you want with my daughter? What right have you to invade my house? We want your daughter as a bait for trap for Sir Malcolm. We think that if your daughter is in our hands, a man from the north that we're very anxious to capture will come riding out of the highlands to rescue her, and when he does, we'll spring the trap. Do I need to tell you the man's name, Sir Malcolm? I have not the faintest idea who you mean. The man's name is William Wallace. That's a lie. My daughter does not even know Wallace. You don't know your daughter. Here's the girl. Are you Faith Canyon? Yes. Tell these men you do not know Wallace, Faith. I cannot, Father, because I do. You're going to capture Wallace for us. We're going to send word through the length and breadth of Scotland that you're in our power. And we're going to execute you on the 30th day of the month. And then your hero will come riding down to rescue you. You're wrong. Because he will not. Then you will die, Lady Kenyon. Then I will die. But you will not get Wallace. Turn in just a moment with the second act of Romance. And now, with Ben Wright starred as Sir William Wallace, and with Francis Robinson as Faith Kenyon, Romance brings you the second act of Gene Holloway's original story, Man from the North. Where are they taking her? To the foot of the Glen of Peel. The foot of the Glen of Peel? If you ride to the cliffs above the Glen, you can look down and see the British camp. And the Glen is honeycombed with enemy soldiers. I see. They want me, they want me to ride down. That's a fine trap. Cliffs on three sides. One way to get down. They're not even giving me a gambler's chance of rescuing her. Well, let's look the situation over. Call 30 of the men and we'll ride to the Glen of Peel. fire on the floor of the glen. It looks like there's only a handful of men down there, but actually there are thousands. John, I'm going down. I've got to go down. You'd be got dead to risk before it. you were halfway down. These cliffs are the limits of safety for you. John, I love her. Do you think that I can just stay up here and wait for them to kill her? Dawn is there. Do you think that I can love her and not try to save her? I think you must. I've done this to her. I'm the one that's killing her. If I'd never met her, she'd be safe tonight. William, you must think of Scotland. She is Scotland to me now. She's all that I love and most and hold dear in Scotland. If she is to die, then... John, let me die trying to save her. No, William, if you were an ordinary man and wanted to fling your life in the teeth of the enemy, it would be your right or your privilege. But you are Wallace of Scotland, a man that has sworn to lead the Scots to victory. I cannot kill the one I love. Even for Scotland. The day the first man died for Scotland and you asked him to, you lost your right to think and choose as a man. The living might understand and release you from your oath, but not the dead, William. I've always been a, a proud man, John. Too proud for tears. Too proud for heartbreak. But now I know the taste of tears and the weight of heartbreak. Now I know what it is to die and yet not to die. Now you know what it is that you owe Scotland and what you must do. I... 
freedom comes high, does it not, John? Aye, freedom comes high. Come. We'd better start back. Aye. We'd better start back. Men will be wondering why we're standing here so long. Oh, goodbye, Faith. Oh, my darling. Goodbye. I am Sir Malcolm Kenyon. I am not armed. I want to see William Wallace. I am William Wallace. I didn't expect... To find me so near the picket line, huh? <laughs> I, uh, I want to enlist under your standard. Huh? But I have with me the majority of the 400 barons and their men. They await me a few miles down the road. The barons will fight with you, Sir William, if you'll have them. I, you do love your daughter, after all. I, I love my daughter. We've all made a great mistake, I see that. I think we all see it. We thought we could cooperate with the enemy. We thought we could compromise. There is no compromise ever when liberty and honor are at stake, Sir Malcolm. When one nation seeks to conquer another, every man must fight or be destroyed. I'm glad you find that out before it was too late. Although I'm, I'm sorry you had to lose a daughter and, and I, the dearest thing in the world to find it out. She is to die at dawn. So they have said. You couldn't take your men and ride down for her. I have less than a thousand here at camp. The others are out on raids. There are five thousand of the enemy at least. If you'll bring that thousand and ride with me, you'll find close to ten thousand down the road who will follow you wherever you lead us. Ah. How do I know this isn't a trick? How do I know that you won't betray me and turn me over to the English? I can only offer you my word and my integrity. Scotland must be free and in our own hands again. And you are the only man to command that freedom. Will you come? Will you lead us? Yes. I will come. I will come. Stars are fading, my lady. I. Dawn is close at hand. And where is Wallace? Wherever he can do the most for Scotland. Seems a shame that one so lovely must die so young. It's a strange feeling to look at the stars and know that you're looking at them for the last time. To feel the dawn wind and know what will come with the dawn. You could save your life if you would lead me to Wallace. You're wasting your time. There's nothing you could do to me that would make me betray him. Why? He betrayed you? He hasn't made an effort to save you? He would have betrayed me more if he'd made an effort and lost. But I wouldn't expect you to understand that. I can understand this. He's letting you die. Were you my lady, I'd have tried in some way to rescue you. And jeopardized your life. Why, yes, a life is well lost in such a gallant cause. Don't be foolish. Take me to Wallace and you will dance again. Take me to Wallace and you'll have jewels and gowns such as you never imagined in your wildest dreams. Take me to Wallace... And I'll not only give the world back to you, I'll give you the best that the world can offer a woman. The best the world could offer me is Wallace. General! General! There's a whole army pouring down the valley. Thousands of men, they're driving everything before them. And Wallace leads them. You're sure? They are shouting his name as they follow him. Quickly, call the men. Yes, sir. Well, my lady, evidently we've both misjudged your hero. Perhaps you did. It's dawn. Your twisting arm, my lady. We shall have to delay it. Well, I will be fair with you. If Wallace can rescue you, you shall go free. Thank you for a great and gallant fight. We have won a great victory. And tomorrow... We'll win another. Already the English are on the run. And slowly and surely we'll drive them from our shores. Scotland will belong to the Scots again. It's a proud victory to we who fought for it on the battlefield. It must be even a prouder victory for a girl who never faltered, even in the face of death. A girl 
who by great heroism brought us all together under one banner, and who, by so doing, brought victory to us and freedom and made it possible to right the wrongs that have burned so long. Scotland must thank her for this victory. Faith, my darling. Last night I stood up there on the cliffs looking down, and it was the end of the world. Last night I, I thought I was looking into a dark and bleak future, empty of all beauty, empty of all love. And now, tonight, tonight, oh, my darling Scotland is heaven again. It is heaven. And Scotland is your kingdom now. And I am your slave. Command me. What will you have? A castle high on a hill's majesty? A palace on the moor? A mansion by the sea? I'm to have whatever I want. Castle, palace, mansion. Whatever you want. Then I must ride down from the castle. Pass by the palace on the moor and mansion by the sea. For a long time ago, my heart planned its future and made that future a cottage in Dundee. Have you forgotten the garden, the meadow, the fireplace where I can rock my dream? You want a cottage in Dundee in place of a castle on the moors? The cottage would become a castle the moment you walked in the door. Then it shall be. I will not have long to wait. And the waiting shall be easy now that I have my two loves. Two loves? I, my two loves. As in the prophecy, I'll have free Scotland for my country and Faith Canyon for my bride. Romance is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Today we have brought you transcribed Gene Holloway's original story, Man from the North, Starring Ben Wright as Sir William Wallace and featuring Francis Robinson as Faith. With Ramsey Hill, Eric Snowden, Ray Lawrence, Alec Harford, Lois Corbett, and Jack Lewis. The special music was arranged and played by Eddie Dunstetter. Next week, a new show will be heard in place of romance. A show designed to fit your Saturday listening. Contrived to free you from the dull routine of the everyday grind. We offer you... Escape. It's one, two, three, and all out for comedy again on CBS tomorrow night in CBS's early Sunday evening lineup of Spike Jones, Jack Benny, and Amos and Andy. Hillbilly singer Eddie Arnold and actress Janice Page are Spike Jones' special guests. On the Jack Benny Show, Claudette Colbert and Vincent Price are his guests. As for Amos and Andy, their four-star guest is Old Man Trouble, as usual. And now, stay tuned for five minutes of the latest news.